Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday evening service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. I'm so glad you were able to join us once again for those of you who are returning and a big welcome to those of you who are joining us for the first time on either Facebook Live or Zoom. We begin our evening with a 10 minute meditation. And so I invite everyone to just get still wherever you are. Your eyes to close. And just bring your awareness to the pattern of your breath. Notice the in-breath. And notice the out breath. There's no need to control or try to change. Just allow that observer in you to sit in quiet contemplation and observation of this miracle of life that unfolds with each in-breath and each out-breath. And if you'd like to give yourself something to focus on, to keep the focus on the breath, you might silently say to yourself, breathing in, with the in-breath and breathing out with the out-breath. And as your mind wanders, which it has a tendency to do over and over again very often, it's a time to exercise that quality of compassion and non-judgment Don't judge yourself for the mind having wandered off. Just notice. Take note of where it went. And you might label that hearing, thinking, imagining, feeling. whatever that is, and just note it for a moment, and then with great compassion, very gently, bring your awareness back to the breath. Breathing in, breathing out.
if the mind wanders, just notice. Notice whether you're thinking, hearing, feeling. And then gently, with great compassion, bring your awareness back to the breath. So as our meditation comes to a close, I invite you to bring your awareness back into the place where you are seated. Just notice the weight of your body and the seat that is supporting you. And as it's comfortable for you, open your eyes. as we join together for this evening's service. And so once again, welcome to everyone. Uh, though there's going to be a little change in our format tonight since we have this 10-minute meditation before service and we've noticed a lot of uh, people are gathering for the meditation. We won't be doing the uh, five-minute silent meditation in the service. Otherwise, it's pretty much uh, the usual format. But at this time, as we begin our service, again, I say welcome to everyone, whether you're joining us via Zoom or Facebook Live. We're so delighted to have you here with us. And I invite our, uh, pardon me, no, it's going to be Sam. You're leading us in our chant, correct? Yes. <laughs> then let's do it. <laughs> God 
Thank you, Sam. Indeed, God is in this place wherever we are, and we're all joined together in that one life of God. So let's come together and know that in consciousness. So once again, I invite you to turn your attention inward, closing your eyes, and join with me in sensing beyond our physical senses, sensing that vibration that connects us, sensing that part of us that is untouched, untainted, unharmed by anything in the world, that part of us that forever seeks the experience of love, joy, beauty, wholeness, every form of goodness. And let us recognize that as that vibration, that essence of God's nature, that one out of which everything is created and that one that lives and moves and expresses itself through all that is, including me, including each and every person gathered for this evening service. Those of us in the sanctuary and all those joining us via the technology that came out of the mind of God to allow us to feel this connection in a tangible way. And so I know that that presence of God is unfolding throughout our time together this evening. That spirit is so present in that vibration of love in which we can feel our connection, even if we're not in the same place physically. I know it is so present in the love of all those that have come together before the service and they're part of the service to share their gifts with all of us. I absolutely know we are touched and inspired and uplifted by our music this evening through Sam on the piano and our soloist, Jamie. I know that the practitioners who are holding vigil are absolutely holding us in that vibration of love and I absolutely open myself right here, right now, to being that vessel through which spirit speaks its word, that it is something that we all, including me, have come to know, come to remember, come to open up to in a greater way. I know that there's great healing and revealing of truth throughout our time together. And for this, I'm so grateful. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be. And so it is. Together we say, Amen. And so I invite you now to join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God, you are so beautiful. 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 Can't wait to touch and feel your presence. Can't wait to touch and feel your presence. Can't wait to touch and hold your hand, oh. oh. God, 
God, you are so beautiful. 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 I can't wait to hear your voice. Can't wait to hear your voice. Can't wait to hear your voice in me. Oh. God, you are so beautiful. 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 I can't wait to touch and feel your presence. I can't wait to touch and feel your presence. Can't wait to touch and hold your hand Oh God I am smitten by this love I feel Use me as a place where you are revealed I commit my life to live in peace I devote my life to live with amazing grace. God, you are so beautiful. 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 So beautiful. I always. I am to you, I owe everything, I am to you. God, you are so beautiful, Lord. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. Ah, well, on an evening where I'm speaking about keeping an open heart, thank you for opening mine up. <laughs> that was lovely. Uh, so yes, I'm looking at this idea of keeping an open heart, and I think we all understand that when we're talking about keeping an open heart, we're talking about keeping ourselves open to love, to being loving, to receiving love. The heart chakra, uh, in Hinduism, this is the heart chakra here, is where uh, that quality of God that is the core nature of God, uh, love, resides. And I think we've seen it through so many different cultures, the idea of the heart and love being associated together. So we are talking about staying in a vibration of love as much as possible. In A Course in Miracles, talks about the idea that there are two primary emotions, love and fear. And it tells us that love is changeless and continually exchanged, offered by the eternal to the eternal. And in this, ex and, uh, in this exchange, when we're exchanging love, that love is extended, it increases as it's given. Now, fear, on the other hand, the Course tells us, has many forms uh, for the content of individual illusions differs. 
Okay, so we're talking about fear is based on some kind of illusion. But the one thing that's common about all the different forms of fear is that they are all insane. And this is really completely in alignment with what we teach in science of mind, although we might language it a little bit differently. I think uh, in science of mind, rather than talking about emotions, we would say that there's one primary impulse in the universe, and that's love. That's God's love. That everything in creation comes out of the impulse of God's love to experience and express itself in the realm of form. So everything is created out of love, and God's love lies at the center of everything in creation, including us. And within that infinite, unconditional love of God, one of the qualities within love is freedom. And so since this love includes freedom, we've been created with free will, with the freedom to discover that nature of God in ourselves, in our own unique and wonderful ways. Now, along with that free will, along with that freedom, comes the possibility of perceiving ourselves as separate from God. And these are just perceptions. So we can feel that we're separate. We can believe that we're separate, though in truth we never can be. And our sense of separation, when we're feeling separate from God, separate from good, that gives rise to fear-based thoughts. That gives rise to feelings of me versus you, them versus us. That gives rise to all the different negative conditions, negative behaviors that we see in the world. The ideas of I'm not lovable, they're not worthy of love, I can't love in situations like this, all of those beliefs, those feelings come out of feeling separate from God. They are you know, fear-based thoughts. And these fears are based on a false sense of separation. So that's why the Course in Miracles refer refers to all the forms that our fears take as being insane. They're based on some kind of delusion. And they're based on some way that we're perceiving ourselves or others or worldly conditions in a way that if we're not seeing the potential for God that lies in them, that if we're maybe looking at them the way we perceive them to be right now and there's something negative, we're not seeing the truth of God's potential being present. Like when we're not showing up at our best, well, God's potential is still there, but we're forgetting it, that. When others aren't showing up at their best, God's potential is still there. And we're not seeing that. So it doesn't mean that we look at ourselves, we look at all the conditions in the world, we look at people who might not be behaving in a very loving way and going like, oh, it's all perfect, it's all fine, um, you know, that we don't need to worry about that. What we're saying is that I may not be showing up in the greatest way I could. I might be buying into ideas of lack and limitation and creating negative situations for myself. Others may not be showing up at their best, but I know there's something greater in me. I know there's something greater in them. And when we're holding that idea, we're keeping our hearts open. We're not saying that things are perfect the way they are, but we're keeping a vibration of love to say that there's some way for us to bring forth greater good out of what is, that there's some greater good of God to be revealed. And when we're feeling that, we move out of fear. The antidote, antidote to fear, you know, the pathway to transcend our fears is through love. We've heard it from you know, the New Testament, the book of John, that perfect love casts out fear. Well, God's love in us is perfect. There's nothing that we need to do to that vibration of God's love to make it better. It's the degree to which we experience and express it and the degree to which we keep our hearts open, the degree to which we 
can stay in alignment with the vibration of love no matter what's going on outwardly or in our lives is the degree to which we experience that goodness of God in our lives. So we cast out fear by learning to be more loving and compassionate with ourselves and with others by keeping an open heart. Bringing love to situations by finding ways to make them better, to make good of them, that moves us beyond fear and that allows us to make good of what is. The minute our hearts shut down, the minute we tell ourselves, well, I, I can't experience love or be loving with myself because I'm not worthy of it or because of what I've done, I can't in any way show compassion for myself in this situation or I can't, absolutely cannot open my heart to people who behave like that or I've been taught that people who are like that are not worthy of love. I can't bring love to this situation any time we get caught up in that type of thinking. We suffer. We're cutting ourselves off from love. You know, I would say love, I've said this many times, is the oxygen of the soul. We cut ourselves off from our spiritual oxygen. We create a sense of separation from love, from God, which in turn creates negativity in our lives. So closing our hearts down, giving in to fear, or it's byproducts of hate or resentment, holding back, all of that negatively impacts our own lives. And you know, sometimes we, I think we don't even realize the degree to which our fears are shutting our hearts down impacts different areas of our lives. You know, I, there was a study done of people thinking of situation that raised feelings of fear, of hate, of anger. And as they studied the body's physiology, when they were having those thoughts, big surprise, it produced all kinds of toxins, blood pressure went up, uh, created a lot of unhealthy responses in the body. They did another study where they put a group of people and monitored their physiology as they watched a documentary on the life of Mother Teresa. And as they watched the acts of love that she was performing, the acts of compassion, they showed that the body started producing chemicals that are healing chemical. It was a healing chemistry in the body that would boost the immune system, that would heal ailments. So as I was thinking about this, I thought, you know, today, in our times today, I think we hear a lot about major disagreements, conflicts between people, different attitudes and ideas. We're hearing a lot of these people are thinking this and these people are thinking that, talking about the pandemic and different people's responses. There's a lot of dissidence and discord. And then we hear of the ways that people have come together, the amazing things that people are doing to help each other out, the acts of kindness, the generosity. As we listen to those two different types of uh, situations, which one makes us feel better? And the thing is for us to remember, and I, I'm assuming everyone out there said the ones that uh, reflect where people are coming together. If not, you can disconnect now if you'd like. No, I'm kidding. Um, I think we can all contribute to helping to cast out the fear, to helping to cast out the sense of discord, to bring forth a healing energy. You know, where there's discord, disagreement, conflict, We'll have our opinions, we'll have our viewpoints, and that's all fine. It's fine, I'm not asking any of us to give up our viewpoints, but to not close our hearts down to those whose viewpoints are completely contrary to our own. You know, A Course in Miracles also tells us, do you want to be right? 
or do you want to be happy? And I'm one of those that was big on when taking a multiple choice exam that would pick number three, uh, or A, B, C, I'd do C, both. I want to be right and happy, because being right makes me very happy, quite honestly, but that isn't always true. Being self-righteous, hanging on to, you know, I'm so right and they're so wrong, and that feeling of separateness does not put us in a vibration where we're experiencing love. We're not feeling good when we're in that place. So I'm looking at this idea of, can we have our opinions? Can we disagree, but realize that there's, there's an infinite presence of love, that our opinions and our viewpoints are finite and changeable, and so are theirs on the other side. But there's this bigger vibration of love that is seeking for us to find the way to move through us, for us to find a way for us all to experience well-being. You know, I remember years back when I was taking a business trip, this was back in the days of my corporate job, and I was in a taxi cab going to the airport. And on the way, uh, the driver started speaking to me, and uh, he was very warm, very friendly. He started telling me about his family. He was so proud of his son, who was an artist, and he was telling me that his uh, son had done a lot of paintings of uh, portraits of Jesus. And he showed me some of the pictures. They were very different from most of the portraits I'd seen. They were lovely. And just the amount of love and the pride he had in his son for being an artist and you know, doing this good work, um, that and other things we were talking about, my heart was so open. The love was flowing. And as we spoke more, you know, he keep, kept opening up. And as we were approaching the airport, he suddenly changed subjects and he started telling me about, you know, a human being has five different points. The head, the arms and hands, and then the legs and feet. So we have five different points. And he said, you know, a star, the way it's normally drawn, has five points. He said, now what kind of a human creature would have six points? He said, it would have to have a tail. It would be the devil. I'm going like, OK, this is interesting. He goes, the Star of David has six points. Does anyone have any idea where this is going? <laughs> he started telling me how the Jewish people are the devil. OK, now, understand, I had been practicing this keeping an open heart, trying to stay open for a long time. So I was able to see the part of me that was responding, reacting, and wanting to shut the heart down. Another part of me managed to stay very open and centered. <laughs> Not one bit. I just, the heart went Ooh! like that. I could just feel I went from heaven to hell in like a split second, we were arriving at my terminal, but I just sat there going, what do I say? I wanted to scream. And I suddenly, I was able to take a breath and just pull myself together a little bit. And I just said to him, you know, I don't see things the way you do. I just said, I don't appreciate that statement. You're actually talking about some of my family members whom I love very much. And I saw when I said that, something in him felt startled. I saw a bit of anger, but I also saw embarrassment. And as we were arriving, <laughs> talk about awkward silence, um, his body language told me that you know, he didn't feel really good about you know, what he said. We didn't say anything. I got out of the cab. My heart wasn't that open. I didn't tip. Um, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. <laughs> but more importantly is afterwards, I just found these waves of rage coming up, just rage. And I thought, OK, what do I, what do, I do with this? Because I had, even though you know, I wasn't a full-time ministry here, I was on staff. I had been practicing this teaching, and I could feel the effects of my body, how it was tightening up. 
And so I knew I needed to turn back to love somehow. But, you know, how? And I certainly couldn't go along with that line of thinking or just say, well, so what? It's okay for people to think like that. I wasn't about to go there. But I reflected and realized that behind my rage, there was this impulse for God's love and respect and justice for all. That's what I felt was missing there, that you know, my reaction was something of God that wanted to be more fully realized. And I had to think about the fact that this man's prejudices were learned and that he had the capacity to change, to change that ideology and to align more with love. And so I used that situation for days um, as a spiritual practice to meditate on the feeling of love that casts out fear, to think of all those situations in the world where there are ideologies where people, just because of what they've learned or thought and believed that isn't true, how it creates conflict and all the unkind acts and all of that. And I just then turned my awareness to praying and feeling the vibration of God's love and justice and respect as being an energy that is in all of us. And to say, you know, somehow let that be more fully realized. So instead of staying in the sense of indignation or rage, it was like, how can I be a vessel to try to put forth a vibration of the greater truth? And that really was my spiritual practice to to bring love and knowing God's love is greater than the discord and the hate in the world instead of being pulled down by it, to be pulled into it. And, you know, I don't know at what point on the, you know, continuum of all eternity that soul is going to wake up. I'm sure I'm unaware of ways that I am holding ideas that are hurtful to others because I have not yet evolved. I certainly am open all the time to expanding and you know being a greater presence of love and kindness. I did, I would say after I calmed down, when I was no longer you know in that place of rage, I called the cab company and I told them of the incident, but I was really clear, I said, I'm not telling you this because I want to have the person fired. I believe everyone should be given a chance. But I said, I hope it's your opportunity to talk to employees and let them know. First of all, talking about things like that, if you have those opinions, A, keep them to yourself. But is there a way to maybe open people up to, you know, changing that way of thinking? You know, after all, some of the people that he's condemning are probably people who get in and help him with his livelihood. So it was more from a place of doing something constructive. It was an impulse of love versus doing something destructive, which would be the impulse of fear. And so what I'd offer us this evening is, yes, we're witnessing a lot of dissidence, discord, um, and for us, even in the place where we may feel passionately about things and object to certain things that we're seeing out there, but to say, let's remember there's a possibility for all of this to change and for us to come together in harmony. We all want the same thing. We all want to be happy. And let us keep an open heart in the sense of taking time to know that in love, there is a way for everyone's needs to be met. There's a common ground that we all share that's greater than our differences. That moves us out of the fear and anger and into a greater vibration of love. And I think in the midst of all the fears, including our own right now around this pandemic, let's take the time to call forth love and comfort. We can feel it in ourselves. Let's call it forth in our prayers in our loving actions, let's extend that out into the world as we do, the more we keep ourselves aligned with love, then that will help to cast out our fears. Those will start to diminish and we contribute to the healing energy that's so needed in the world right now. So I invite you to turn your attention inward.
and I invite you to turn your awareness to an individual or a group whose ideas or behaviors you object to and to whom you close your heart. Just be willing to be aware of that in yourself. And ask yourself, what quality of God would I like to see more fully expressed through this being or these beings or this group? What quality of God is it that you think they are not expressing? And remind yourself that that quality of God lies in you. And it lies in them even if it's not in full expression at this moment. But it still is there as a potential. And so I invite you to contemplate the idea, God in me is greater than any threat or hurt I feel as a result of them. And God in them is greater than their ideology, their behaviors. Know that on the spectrum of all eternity, this quality of God is something we are all waking up to in our own ways, in our own times, to experience these qualities and express them more fully. And so, as you're aware of this quality of you, God that you feel is lacking, in this individual or group that you've been objecting to. Notice how that quality of God feels in you. You know what it feels like because it is a part of your spiritual core. And so be a presence right now to offer it out to the world around you rather than being pulled down by where it isn't being expressed, feel that quality of God in you extending out from you. Realize that as you keep your heart open and remain centered in love, in a sense of the greater potential that there's, that's there to be revealed, you experience more love. Send it out to all those right now who may be feeling disconnected from love. And so I invite you to set your intention to release any tendencies to shut your heart down. Any tendencies to stay in condemnation. Just be willing to let go of that. And follow that up by setting your intention to embrace a greater sense of keeping your heart open, being a vessel, a vibration of love to hold the space for the greater potential, the greater healing to come forth, to be revealed. Just embrace that sense of the open heart. And knowing we can always bring our awareness back to this place, I invite you to bring your awareness back into your space right now as Jamie comes forward to lead us in our chant. Moment by moment, breath by 
So please join me in prayer. Bringing our awareness to that place within us, that inner sanctuary, that holy place where pure love, joy, beauty, abundance, every form of goodness lies sacred, seeking to experience and express itself. And let us recognize that as the vibration of God's love, God's beauty, God's goodness that lies fully and equally throughout creation because everything is created out of the essence of God's nature. And God's nature inhabits all that is, including me, including each and every person gathered for this time together. Every being everywhere is filled with the nature of God. And so knowing this, I speak my word remembering the truth that God's nature in all of us is birthless, deathless, changeless. It has existed before we came into this incarnation. It exists through us right now. It will continue on forever. As we go through the changes in our lives on this human plane, where things are constantly changing, there's this nature of God that is always there to reshape itself, recreate itself in some new way. So where some form of love may no longer be in our lives in a tangible way, some relationship, it is replaced by another if we are open to it. I know this love remains a vibration that keeps us connected so that we continue to be connected from this plane onto the next as we leave this earthly form into the next dimension of life. It is always there for us to experience and express. It is also a vibration that is healing. It is wholeness itself. It is well-being in every way can experience. And so as we align with that vibration of perfect health and wholeness, we see a healing of physical ailments, of emotional discord, dis-ease of any kind. I know that we can call forth that energy and know it is a healing energy that produces the healing channels for the ailments that are being experienced around our planet right now. I also know that this vibration is absolute creativity. It is always seeking a creative expression of itself through us. And as we open to its creativity, we find those perfect ways for its nature to be shared in our unique ways, whether it be in our hobbies, in our careers, in our relationships. We are opening ourselves right here, right now, to being those vessels through which God is able to give of itself unto itself in perfect, unique ways that we are meant to give of its nature in this world. I know that its essence of God is limitless. It is infinite. And so it knows nothing of lack and limitation. So where we are experiencing any lack or limitation, let us open ourselves right now to knowing we are one with that infinite giver, receiver, that infinite source of all good. And as we open to that, we see an expansion in our capacity to give and receive love, to give of our creativity and to celebrate the creativity around us. If we are feeling constricted in the area of finances, we absolutely know that God is a source of all good and we see an inflow for our financial needs to be met and beyond so we can generously share and give back to life. And I know that as we've explored this evening, the core vibration of God is pure love. And so there is a love in us that is able to hold us and all beings in a vibration of love. And so as we open to that truth, as we first open ourselves to that vibration of the love for that highest self of our being, that essence of God, 
and to see it in others, we see that love more fully outpictured in all our relationships from those with family and friends and loved ones to the most casual acquaintances. We see that love being absolutely expressed through our activities and the ways we give of ourselves. And knowing that that vibration of love is always for greater good, let us now take this time in silence to set our intentions for some greater good that we would like to see revealed. And so whether this greater good is for ourselves, for loved ones, for situations in the world that call to our attention, let us absolutely recognize that we're feeling the will of God for more and more of its nature to be known and felt and realized throughout creation. And so as we know that God is behind these intentions, that God is absolutely present in all of these situations, I know right here, right now, that good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And from this place, we bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And with this, just with a heart filled with gratitude, for knowing this truth, for feeling this truth. I just say, thank you, God, and I release this word knowing it is so, it is done, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, amen. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide Yes, I'm only here for God No more struggle, no more strife With my faith I see the light I am free in the spirit Yes, I'm only here for God I release and I let go I let the spirit run my life and my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. Amen. <laughs> so this is the time in our service for our affirmative giving. And uh, so if you're seeing on your screen right now, a uh, way that you can participate uh, remotely is to click on the link. Uh, and if it's not there, not working for you, whatever, it's nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that will take you uh, to the page where you can make your donations online. You're also welcome to call up until it'll be probably around 8.30 this evening. Uh, we'll be here to answer the phone and uh, accept your donations over the phone if you'd rather do that with a credit card or debit card over the phone. Um, let's see what, well, and of course, you can always mail in your checks, but most of all, Thank you, thank you, thank you for participating in this way. So let's hold our gifts to our hearts as we say together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Blessed always, blessed always for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy 
be so triumphant that we rest in God and say amen. Blessed always, blessed always, blessed always for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say amen. Let our joy, let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say amen. Rest in, rest in God and say Amen. So as we bring our service to a close, I uh, just first want to remind you that if you'd like a prayer with a practitioner after the service, you can receive that if you are on Zoom, stay on Zoom till after the service is over. Or if you're on Facebook Live right now, just go to our website and uh, go to the link to get on the Zoom uh, site and you'll be able to um, be put into a private session with a practitioner. Uh, those who are supporting us hosting the Zoom right now will take good care of you to make sure uh, you get the support you need. Also, if you'd like to submit a prayer request, um, you can do so via email. Send a prayer request to prayer at nhcrs.org. So prayer at nhcrs.org. Just email your prayer request to us or call the church office, 818-762-7566. And if you select option three, you can leave a message um, to, uh, you know, what your prayer request would be. Or if you select option four, you can listen to a pre-recorded pre uh, reading and prayer done by a practitioner. So we continue to try to find ways to support you. And if you are interested in a session with a practitioner, just go to our website and you can find the list of practitioners and their numbers there. Um, a few announcements. Uh, oh, wait, before I get to the announcements, I do want to thank everyone who's been of service this evening, as always, to Adam, who's making sure we are heard and seen up here, to Alex and Blair, thank you so much for managing the cameras, to Jamie and Sam, thank you so much for the beautiful musical support, to our practitioners out there who are holding vigil this evening, thank you so much, uh, to... Uh, I know Dean and Mark Crowell and Barbara Berg have all been working to support us on Zoom. Um, is Melissa on with us this evening, or who is Melissa? Thank you for the support on Facebook Live, and of course to all of you for being here. Uh, next week, we will have our first Facebook Live and Zoom Teze service with practitioner Joanne O'Brien. Uh, the meditation will start at 6.45 p.m., and the service starts at 7. And if you've not been here for a Tze service before, it begins uh, with a um, meditation, as I said. And then Dr. Mark and I will be joining Joanne. It's an evening where there's a lot of chanting, meditation, readings. It's really a beautiful experience, and we hope you'll uh, join us for that. We invite you to keep checking our website for information about new events and what's going on here. Uh, one thing you will find is that the Four Agreements is a five-week workshop that Dr. Mark will be teaching that's open to all, and that will begin on Monday, May 11th at 7 p.m. Uh, we'll be exploring the parallels between the book The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz and the Science of Mind philosophy taught by Ernest Holmes. Uh, so you can sign up on our website or call the church office. The women's group will be meeting this 
uh, Sunday via Zoom. This will be facilitated by practitioner Jeannie Laporte at 1 p.m. All women are uh, welcome, and the link is on our website to join for that. Please remember that Youth Church for five, ages 5 to 11 meets Saturdays at 10.30 a.m. Teen Church for uh, kids 12 through 19 um, are meeting at 9.45 on Sunday and 7.30 p.m. on Wednesdays. We have a new daily meditation Monday through Saturday that's um, at 8 a.m. The information for the Zoom link is on our website. It's a 15-minute meditation. It's been lovely sharing that experience with so many of you. And uh, in addition to those wanting prayer after service, we have a Zoom virtual patio experience. So if you just have missed connecting with congregants, on the patio as before. Please uh, join us after the service. I'll be going to my office and joining those of you so we can visit for a bit. And uh, let's see, I think I've told you about Ministry of Prayer, Dial of Prayer, our website, um, and that we'll be in the church office till 8.30 uh, to accept any donations you'd like to make over the phone. This is uh, the last Wednesday of the, no it is not, is it? Yes, it is the last. It's the 29th. How can I forget? Well, you know, what month? Of April. <laughs> My birthday was two days ago. <laughs> Jeez. Oh. 65, folks. <laughs> so for all of us who had birthdays, um, Sam, can we celebrate ourselves? <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> and I trust you all have some delicious cake at home to enjoy. <laughs> so thank you once again for being with us this evening. Let's turn our attention in order one more time. So once again, how grateful I am for all the ways that that vibration of love, that essence of God has made itself known to us in our time together for the way we can feel our connection even when we're not in the same physical space, for the ways we've experienced it through the music, through the words, through the love of all those who've been of service. I absolutely know that as we've come to look at this idea of keeping an open heart that we are more aware of that vibration of love that holds everything, including us and others, even when we don't show up at our best in love, and that there's some way for us to keep an open heart and find the way in to greater understanding, greater peace, greater harmony. I know we carry that outward with us into our lives, and it continues to bless us and ripples out into the world. And so I give thanks for the blessings we've received and how they multiply as we go forward. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so. I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, amen. Thank you once again so much for being with us this evening. I'll see some of you out on the virtual patio. Let's join together one more time in song. it always that's it always for the arms of God surround us let our joy be so triumphant that we rest